welcome back. Um, now that we've introduced uh, the language of RDF, serializations of RDF, the data model, the semantics as well, discussed a little bit the, the impact that it can have on the web and web publishing. There are still some things I want to say, uh, and um, this is sort of the wrap up on uh, everything RDF uh, says. So there are some things you should really be aware of that your eyes are not uh, global identification services. So if you look for an uh, URI, um, it doesn't mean that you always refer to the same thing. So um, uh, I'm free to use the string RDF type uh, to my own uh, needs and I can uh, redefine it, I can give it properties, I can say that uh, uh, RDF type is, is always end. No, I can't say this in RDF, but I can uh, say a lot of nonsense about also existing your URIs uh, because they are just one reference and I can say anything about this reference. The, the advice is do not. So create your URIs in a namespace within your own domain so that you can use it and that you can trust it and that you uh, other people who want to use it uh, know where it comes from and so forth. This is the basis for growing trust on the semantic web that you know that you can trust information when it is referenced in a certain way. But it's very important to understand. Um, as I mentioned previously, it's uh, we, we call it an IDF graph, but it's not really a graph, sorry. Um, so if you have a triple, the Netherlands is related with Amsterdam with a DBO capital relation, then it's easy to, to, to draw it. But if you already add some information that type information is type of a property, then uh, this becomes more difficult because in a way um, now type becomes a property, so has two input values. So IDF graphs are sets of triples, but not real graphs. They are hypergraphs in this sense, because we can also now add information to the, the labels and to the, to the edges of the graph. And that is one of the big problems in, if you want to formalize it, that the set of nodes and edges do, are not disjoint. They often are, but they don't need to be disjoint. And this is not only a, f a bug, as it might sound here, but it's also a feature because it allows us to integrate information about the properties in the graph itself. The last question is, where is it and how to publish it? And there are basically uh, three different ways, I would say. Um, so the first one is that you publish a TTL file, a total file, or an IDF file, or name triple, and so forth, and you put it on your web server so that other people can write, can, can read it, and da download it, and parse it, and so forth. And in a way, this is what you will do in the first uh, in, in this new uh, assignment, in the practical assignment. You will have a file to total that you read into your program and manipulate then the information in it. But it can also be integrated with web pages. So if you, you, if you open your HTML page, you don't, often don't see that there is also structured RDFA uh, data or microdata included in this HTML page, which is only meant for machines to understand. And this is the basis of also some of the success of the knowledge graph of, of uh, Google, that they can now structure and improve their search results because they have this information on the um, in their, um, in, in embedded in the HTML pages that they parse. Uh, there's another way, and that is through a content negotiation. So you just uh, uh, download the information f using a curl command, for example, from, a, from a, a, a command line, or, and that is the, the most, uh, uh, the other most common one is that you um, have a, a, a a triple store, a specific RDF specific database, uh, which um, is actually stores the triples in a very efficient way and usually provides a standard HTTP API so that you can query Sparkle using Sparkle. And um, this is then called a Sparkle endpoint. So basically, in many cases, you have a database that is, is, is purpose built for dealing efficiently with RDF data and that you can query using HTTP and the Sparkle language. And that basically gets us to the next element of this uh, module, and namely, what kind of language can I use to uh, get the information out of a, a database 
out of a triple store or from a, from a, a, my program because you can also use it in a programmatic way in the second assignment that's what we're going to do um, but class is going to explain how uh, sparkle works and what it is i want to quickly give you some examples of how this really might look this is a data set um, uh, that is published on the uk legislation website uh, as i already showed and this data set uh, lives there as an rdf uh, data set really as a as a as a as a, uh, as a simply as a, as a document and you can interpret this document so if you go to this website you see uh, a rendering for human consumption of this data set. And the same holds for Wikipedia and Vbpedia. So we have Wikipedia, which is the, the human right way of, uh, of, of getting to the information in Wikipedia. Um, but there's also um, uh, data available that you can de 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 get access to by an HTTP GET request. And, um, and that really gives you access to the data. So we have one way of looking at it that is the uh, the, the human rendered version of the data. So this is uh, already somehow an intermediate step uh, that we could follow up, as I said before. But there's also a way of looking at the original data itself. This is now the, the information in N triple. So if I open this, then you will see that I get, um, uh, uh, I get a data set that is uh, very hard to read, but it really is the original RDF data uh, for exactly the same information that I now just showed you in the browser in a readable format before. So this is the information now in N triples. So let me return to the slide. Um, UK legislation, I had this Wikipedia. So let's summarize. Um, RDF is a generic language for describing data about resources. It extends the linking structure of the web and is therefore very, very useful for, uh, for representing knowledge graphs on the web. Data is represented as triples, which could consist of URIs, which are references to objects on the web, literals and blank nodes, the variables. Uh, sets of triples form an RDF graph. Um, and the metadata can be part of the data itself. So you can ship a RDF data set, which contains the schema, for example, which can be very handy. And using this knowledge graph format, data can be very easily linked to other data sets by sharing just the URIs. And in that way, it's completely application independent. So data that you produce in RDF can be reused by others in their applications. So before we go to Sparkle, let's um, see what the further steps are. You will now see Sparkle, uh, learn how to use Sparkle, the query language. You will see how to make your own linked data in the practical assignment as well. Um, and then in the next uh, modules, you will see how to define your own ontology. So the, the metadata, the, the, the description of the data sets, but also the description of the uh, domains. Then we will learn how to integrate your own data with that of others, and then how to publish it uh, on the linked data on the web. And finally, in the project, how to write an application that makes use of your data and the data that other people have built, that you have integrated and enriched with a deep uh, knowledge from an, ontolo in an ontology. And uh, that's then the final project. Mm -hmm.